All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, I wanted to take a second to talk about a couple matchups that I'm really, really looking forward to in this upcoming 2021 New York Jets season. But to kind of preface before we jump in, I'm always excited about Jets football, right? And really football as a whole, doesn't matter if it's Jets, another team, Thursday night, Monday night, high school football, college football, whatever. I'm always amped. I'm, I always get pumped up for football. But when I look at the Jets schedule specifically, these five games just jump right off the page at me. And by the way, before we jump in, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Which games are you most excited for as we kind of enter into the season? Whether you're going to be watching them on TV or going to the games, doesn't matter. What games are you looking forward to the most? So funny enough, the first game on this list is week one of the NFL season, Jets at Panthers. I am totally, totally amped for this one. I mean, there's so many storylines, but right off the bat... It's week one, right? We have so many new fr new faces on this team. Corey Davis, Carl Lawson, LaMarcus Joyner, Elijah Moore, Elijah Vera Tucker. Uh, and of course, it's Zach Wilson's first NFL game. Always, always exciting. Whenever you have a brand new rookie quarterback, let alone the second overall pick in the draft, it's always something to look forward to. Not to mention it's Robert Sala's first game as a head coach. It's Mike LaFleur's first game as a full-time offensive coordinator, full-time play caller. Exciting, exciting stuff. So when you take a look at the matchup itself, both teams are really, really young. Both teams are led by young quarterbacks. Both teams have quarterbacks going into year one of the offensive systems. Both teams have young head coaches. Robert Sala's going into year one. Matt Rule's going into year two. Both teams don't really have a lot of experience, right? Whether you want to talk about the coaches or the players. So it's not like Bill Belichick versus Andy Reid here. We don't really know what to expect. That's pretty cool. Both teams have young core pieces that will be built around for years to come. And then, of course, there's other storylines as well, like Matt Rule turning down the Jets' job a couple seasons ago right far along in the interview process then backed out and said you know what i'm going to decline i'm going to hang back at baylor wait one more season and then probably the biggest storyline of the game sam darnold versus his old team sam darnold versus zach wilson uh, this was the biggest personnel decision that the jets had this offseason and they ended up going with zach wilson and trading sam darnold away to the carolina panthers and it just so happens we're seeing him week one so it should be a lot of fun i'm really really looking forward to it the second game on this list is week five against the Atlanta Falcons. Now, technically, this is a Falcons home game, but it's being played in London. So right off the bat, that's obviously the first positive. That's something that I'm always looking forward to. I, I love the 930 kickoff. Why? Because it's just football all day, right? A really, really important game at 930. Then you get the one o'clock, the four o'clock, and then the Sunday night. But when you're looking at the matchup between two teams, I think this is actually going to be a pretty big test for the Jets defense, for Robert Sala specifically. I mean, you look at the amount of offensive playmakers that the Falcons have. Uh, now, I, I will say this. We don't really know what's happening with Julio Jones. He could sick on the team. He could be traded. We'll see. I would say right now there's a lot of smoke that Julio could be traded, but even if he is traded, the Falcons still have tons of offensive firepower with Ridley, with Gage, with Hurst, with newcomer Kyle Pitts. The Falcons have tons of playmakers, okay? Tons of guys that can really, really make an impact uh, every single Sunday. And that's, again, assuming that Julio isn't there, but let's just throw Julio on top of that. That is a lot of bodies right? So it's going to be a big challenge for Robert Sala, the defense, the corners, the DBs, and then also for the defensive linemen. Uh, I mean, you take a look at that Falcons offensive line. Yes, it's unproven. And yes, it's young. Uh, we haven't really seen a ton of production, but, uh, and really I'm looking at the, at the O-line as a whole. Obviously there's been a couple guys on that offensive line that have really produced over the last couple of seasons. But if these young guys start to blossom early in the season, there's a very good chance Matt Ryan could actually have all day to throw. And then of course, if you flip it and you're looking at it from the Jets offensive perspective and the Falcons defensive perspective, I actually believe it, it works out in the Jets favor. Four weeks of Zach Wilson's tape. That's it. Only four weeks of Zach Wilson's tape. Four weeks of the Michael Floor system. Four weeks of Robert Sala's system with the green and white. Okay, so there's really not a whole lot to go off of. And you look at the Jets' defensive coordinator, it's Jeff Ulbrich. Where was he the last couple of years in Atlanta with Dan Quinn? He knows this defense. He knows this roster through and through. So... I think not only is it just going to be an exciting matchup, I think it's going to be a big test for the Jets unit. I, I, I love the timing of the game right 930. I'm pumped for the UK fans. Uh, the Jets are finally going back over there. I think the last time we played uh, over in London was against the Miami Dolphins. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was the last time. And that was that was years ago. I mean, that, Tannehill was back in Miami. So it's been, I think Gase was actually the coach in Miami at that point in time. But 
Anyway, the Jets have their work cut out for them in week five, but I feel like if you read between the lines, the Jets actually have a couple of things uh, really going for them. Next up, week eight, the Jets are going to be at home taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I know on paper, right, just like on the surface, this is like, okay, this isn't really a big game. It's not a divisional game. It's not, you know, against some juggernaut of the NFL, but I really do feel like the Jets and the Bengals, they're on the same level and they actually mirror each other in numerous ways. I mean, of course, they both have young quarterbacks, Joe Burrow and Zach Wilson, guys that they can build around moving forward. Both teams, I feel like, have sneaky amounts of weapons on the offensive side of the football. I mean, on the Jets side alone, we have Jamison Crowder, Corey Davis, Keelan Cole, Elijah Moore, uh, Denzel Mims is another guy. That's five guys just on the Jets. And then you flip it over and you look at the Bengals. Tyler Boyd, J newcomer Jamar Chase, he's going to be awesome. Uh, T. Higgins, Auden Tate. I mean, these two teams have a ton of really young, really awesome wide receivers that still have room to grow, even though a couple of them have produced, right? You look at Tyler Boyd, been pr pretty productive, you know, through his NFL career, same with Corey Davis and Crowder, but yet they all still can get better, and that's what's awesome about it. Uh, Zach Taylor, relatively young coach, just like uh, Robert Sala. Now, Taylor has been in the mix for a little bit now, so he's seen his fair share as an NFL head coach, but really, I feel like when you're looking, when you're just comparing the personnel, I feel like they both just have so many similarities, and I didn't even bring up uh, the young cores on D. Defense. I feel like both teams have young building blocks who continue to make an impact as the weeks go by. But at the end of the day, I just feel like both of these teams not only just share a lot of similarities, but they're both in the same uh, boat, if you will, as far as overall development, progression. I feel like both teams are going in the right direction. It's just a matter of nailing a couple more draft picks. Just getting more experience for the quarterbacks, getting more experience for the young players, and more experience for the coaching staff. But um, again, really, really excited for this matchup. Next up, we're going all the way to week 16, where the Jets are going to be at home taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I feel like every single year there's that unwritten rivalry between the first overall pick and the second overall pick, especially if both of those guys are quarterbacks. And in this case, they are, right? Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. But it goes deeper than that. You take a look at the head coaching roles, both Robert Sala and Urban Meyer are entering year one of their professional head coaching tenure. So let's see who finishes strong down the stretch of the season. I mean, it's, it's really, really important for these young coaches to really create that foundation, create that culture by playing tough, really grinding out the tail end of the season, not giving up, not laying down. Like, look, let's face it. Both of these teams don't really have, I don't want to say they don't have Super Bowl aspirations, but the expectation is it's not Super Bowl or bust for both of these teams. The Jags are coming off of a 1-15 and season where the Jets only won two games. Okay, so let's see if these young teams will continue to fight for their rookie head coaches this late into the season. And then for the last game on this list, the Jets are going to be at home in Week 17 to take on the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now the Bucs are absolutely loaded. I mean, they, they're bringing back pretty much everybody from last season. They're coming off of a Super Bowl championship, great overall roster, tons of firepower, fantastic staff, right? Arians, Leftwich, and, and Todd Bowles, of course, ex-New York Jets head coach, obviously. This Bucs team is great, but that's the exact point. I want to see how the New York Jets, the new look New York Jets, stack up against the best. I mean, as a competitor, that's what you want. You want to see how you look against the best of the best, and that's exactly who the Bucs are. Now, of course, I am kind of basing that or forming that opinion off of last season's success, the roster, and all of the great things that they did last year. But because everybody's coming back, because I don't really see anybody just completely falling off a cliff, nobody's really showing any signs of decline outside of like Gronk, I feel like the Bucks will be a very, very, very talented team next season, especially because the Bucks really turned it on late last year. I don't see this team slowing down anytime soon. So those are the five games I'm really, really looking forward to. Now, again, I do want to just throw this in there. I'm looking forward to every single game. I literally cannot get enough of football. I mean, Saturday's college game day, like I'm there at 930, like when college game day just kicks off 9, 930, whenever it is all the way till 1, 130, watching the Mountain West and Pac-12. And then of course, waking up on Sunday and just spending the entire entire day watching ball. The only time I'm not watching ball is when I'm making a video, like a recap video or something like that on Sunday. But anyway, totally pumped for this season. There's so much to look forward to. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Which games are you looking forward to the most? I can't wait to hear them. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.